What's the scariest thing that's ever happened to you? About two years ago, I had severe bronchitis. Severe coughing and shortness of breath were the main symptoms. I couldn't talk without coughing. I couldn't lay down to sleep without coughing. It got so bad one night I was home alone and I couldn't breathe deeply anymore. I could only take a shallow breath. My roommate was out of town and I had no one to reach out to. I started getting panicky because I was afraid I wouldn't ever be able to breathe normally again and that I would die because I couldn't breathe or catch my breath. The 2018 Hawaii Missile Threat I was a senior in high school and we were getting ready to start our paddling race when we all got the notification. It was pure chaos. I remember that my parents were still at home and couldn't reach me since the streets were packed. I thought I was gonna die alone in all away water. I got robbed at gunpoint when I was working alone one night at Subway when I was 16. I was driving on the northern part of the Ring Road in Iceland. Buddies and I were seeing the whole country and it was bad weather in the middle of winter. Roads were closing behind us so we couldn't turn back. We finally had a clear day ahead of us where we should have been able to drive and prevent being snowed in for a few days. We hit a stretch of road with no gas stations for many miles and we fill up on gas and go. Along the way the weather starts declining and eventually it gets to whiteout conditions. We couldn't stop for fear of being snowed in. So we crawled along at 10 miles an hour. Closest I felt I ever came to dying on a road in the middle of nowhere in Iceland in a blizzard. Great trip though 1010 would go back. I stopped at a light in a questionable part of town and a strange lady hopped into the passenger seat of my car. She told me to drive her to the ATM and get her some money. I told her that I had forgotten my purse and could not do so my purse was behind my seat and I was really hoping she wouldn't look around and catch my lie. She kept insisting that I give her money and I kept driving and telling her I couldn't. I'm pretty sure the $20 or so dollars I had in the bank would not have been enough anyway. Finally I saw a cop car stopped on the side of the road. I pulled up behind it and told her she could either get out then, or I'd start honking my horn to get the cop's attention. She decided to leave. I was pretty shaken by that. I'm not sure what I would have done if I hadn't seen the cop and she was getting increasingly insistent and I know I would not have won a fight with her. Also, she took my bag of gummy worms. My ex-husband and I got into a fight one night. Later while we were on the way home he stopped talking and started speeding. He drove into a traffic pylon at 80 miles per hour. A guy stopped traffic and walked up to the window of the taxi I was in and pointed a gun at my head through the window. Then said wrong taxi, and casually walked away. I hope he never found the right taxi. I was driving and a man was purposely riding his bike into incoming traffic and cars were hitting each other. I had to go onto the curb to avoid hitting him and came inches from hitting pedestrians. I couldn't drive for years. It was by far the scariest thing I have ever experienced. Nearly fell off a cliff when skiing but got rescued. Being in a locked bathroom while a fire drill was going off. I was in a halo cast due to having a back surgery so I couldn't move my head or the middle of my body. I must have been like five. Being almost paralyzed while that terrible alarm was blaring was terrifying, it felt like a minute doom was approaching and you're left defenseless. Scarred me the rest of my childhood to even into high school. Someone broke into our storage shed. Stole barely anything, just a speaker and a handful of coins. But when we caught him in the act, he just slowly walked off and said if you follow me I'll shoot you. It may not sound the scariest but when you don't know if this person who invaded your home is bluffing about having a gun or not. It is horrifying. Was at a house party and we were in the basement. We were warned by the host of the party that her cousin James was there and that he wasn't quite right mentally, but didn't really specify how. Probably about an hour into the party we're just standing around talking and dancing when out of nowhere James comes running through the basement from upstairs and jumped through a wooden door clear through to the other side like the fucking Kool-Aid man. Then the guy who was bartending DJing cut the music, pulled a gun out from his waistband, held it up and said party's over, everyone. I've never ran out of a house faster in my life. That was almost 20 years ago and to this day I still don't know exactly what the fuck was going on. I was 14 I think. Went on a swinging boat ride at the fair, the kind that paws upside down. The auto-locking seat belt bar didn't lock all the way down against me, so when it stopped upside down I started to slip out of my seat. It probably only lasted 10-15 seconds until we went down again but I was holding myself into that car for dear life. Pretty scary. But it didn't kill my love of roller coasters at it all the replies show this sort of thing is disturbingly common. Kinda makes you wonder about the regulations and protocols at these temporary carnivals. I was about 12 and kayaking with my dad down a creek near our house. The water was flowing very fast because it had just rained. We were coming up on a corner and he yelled at me to stick my paddle in the water to turn. I couldn't seem to move and crashed right into the bank of the creek. I latched onto a root of a tree while my kayak floated downstream. I stayed in the water for about 20 minutes screaming for help, hoping someone would hear me, no one did, 
so I looked around and saw another branch about 10 feet down where I could get onto the ground and climb up. I let go of the one I was on and in about 2 seconds I was to the one I wanted to get to. I then floated there for a bit and got the strength to climb onto solid ground. I climbed up and around a small hill to get to my dad who had somehow retrieved both kayak and paddle. We hugged, promised never to tell my mom, and rode the kayaks to our house driving across the mountain at night during a snowstorm. I could not see anything except for the red light of the car in front of me. I know there is a cliff on my right side but I could not see the railing. And I was driving by myself. I got stopped by the cartel in Mexico. I live on the border and we decided to go eat some authentic tacos. My dad. My brother and his blonde girlfriend and I 12 were driving to our favorite taco place when this truck behind us started honking at us. Unfortunately there were three speed bumps in a row right in front of us. So the truck got impatient and pulled up in front of us. Then they stopped at the intersection which was right in front of us. Along with another truck that was behind them. And a van. Then, like insects, they all swarmed out of their vehicles with AKs and body armor. They lined up pointing to both out car, and then down the street in the direction our car was facing. Two guys started smacking the car with the butt of their guns and yelling at us to leave. Then they shot some warning shots at the ground in front of the car. My dad floored it backwards while my brother shoved his white girlfriend into the floor and I tried to become one with the seat. Almost died that day. At least that's what it felt like. I worked for an armored car company. Barely made over $10 an hour and got to handle millions of dollars, and carry a sidearm for my job. I literally only had to qualify at the gun range to carry a weapon. That's it. I was putting about $150,000 in an ATM, when out the corner of my eye, I saw someone run around the corner at full speed towards me. Fight or flight is the real thing, I drew my weapon in a split second and almost shot him. He immediately hit the brakes and put his hands up. Come to find out, the ATM ate his card. He was inside the bank talking to the teller when she told him that I could probably return his card since I just opened up the ATM. He bolted from the bank to catch me before I left scared the shit out of me. People attempted to carjack me in Milwaukee. They blocked the entrance to a restaurant I was eating at with a car, pulled up next to me in a second car like a bat out of hell, so close I wouldn't have been able to open my driver's side door. Then four people ran out of their car to prevent me from leaving. I threw it into reverse and looked over to see my friend Rory was hanging onto my passenger side door. I slowed a second and screamed at him Rory get in the fucking car the carjackers jumped out of the way as I drove around the other side of the restaurant to a clear exit and then sped down 27th Ave going about 120 miles per hour, worried that they'd follow me. I had a pretty high fever once and I started to dream. I vaguely remembered having a choice of saving earth or destroying it and for some reason I destroyed it, woke up feeling so guilty I seriously contemplated jumping off the roof. Made me realize how crazy fevers can be. Pistol in my face by a kid no more than 13 years old. I was sure that little fucking idiot was going to kill me. I was swimming way way out in the ocean in St. Croix. There was this huge drop off basically like an underwater cliff where if you looked down it was just a pitch black bottomless pit. Anyway that was creepy but not the scary part. Started swimming back to the beach and four barracuda swam by me. I just kind of floated underwater watching them pass by me trying to be still and not freak DF out. Oddly enough they had no interest in me at all. According to the movies I should have been dead meat. I spent three hours in a police station in Shanghai, China. I'd been out to dinner that night with a friend, he talked to me about another girl who was working at our company that he had a crush on, and I was ribbing him, telling him how he'd never have a chance, she was too beautiful. The man at the table next to us overheard us, got mad that a foreigner was taking a Chinese woman and called the police, and said my friend was bragging to me about being a pedophile. This alone was enough for the police to come, put us in their cars, and take us to the police station for hours. Before this, we hadn't had any interaction with this man at all, I'd even looked over and thought oh, he's kinda cute when we sat down, but we never interacted with him at all. He just decided he had a problem with us and caused three hours of drama at the police station for nothing. Nothing happened to him either, I don't even think he was reprimanded by the police. I fell asleep on a bus and missed by stop by several was midnight, it was a place I didn't know an him girl. Thankfully the driver of the bus pointed to the stop where I should wait for the other bus so I go back and it came really fast. I was really fortunate that day. Was stupidly free climbing a big rock in Sedona and lost traction and just started to slide down and couldn't stop myself. There was a small ledge with a cactus on it beneath the rock and then a drop of at least 100 feet. That cactus stopped me and likely saved my life. I nearly drowned. I was swimming way out in the ocean when a really bad storm came out of nowhere. I was a strong swimmer but it didn't matter. 
It felt like my lungs were on fire and being shredded with knives. There was so much sand in the water that I couldn't see I figured out which way was up by being slammed into the seafloor and swimming in the opposite direction I was underwater long enough that I lost consciousness and my last thought was I'm going to die now and nothing will ever hurt me again when I came to. I was being dragged up the beach. I coughed and vomited up what felt like more than a liter of sand and seawater. Every time I blew my nose for weeks afterwards more sand would come out. Me 17, on a rainy day with slippery tires went through a corner too fast. Two friends in the car with me. Lost control, car swerved, we missed oncoming traffic by probably an inch. It happened in an instant. I regained control when the car was pointing in the driving direction again, by lifting from the brakes so we moved forward as if nothing happened. A week later going around the same corner an accident happened, head to head. I was second on the scene and held a stranger's hand as they are trapped under the steering wheel, slipping in and out of consciousness, in total pain, while waiting for emergency services. I was asked to leave by the police when they learned I was not an eyewitness to the actual accident. But I knew what happened, because I escaped a crash like this just a week before. I never asked people what happened to the people in the other car and I do not know if the person I assisted made it. All I do remember is the total chaos in my memory of arriving at the scene, linked to my irresponsible behavior behind the wheel a week before. I had filed a sexual harassment complaint at my work two years after it initially started because I thought it had been reported by my coworker who had witnessed it. When I had to go in for a third round of questioning my head boss asked me, why is it affecting you so badly? And I had to break down and had to tell them about the abuse I went through as a child. It's not something I wanted to talk about but to have them ask that. I was put on the spot. They didn't do anything to the guy but told him to keep away from me despite having so many complaints against him from not just me. Being 19 at a house party in an unfamiliar rural town with mostly people I didn't know. Boyfriend and I were having an argument outside the house and two guys decided to come out and pick a fight. Dropped my boyfriend and started wailing into him, while I tried to pull them off him and scream for help. No one heard me over the sounds of the music but a friend had noticed the guys follow us out and grabbed some others to come investigate. By the time they hot to us, I had ripped some hair out of one guy's head and was balled up over my boyfriend's head and neck trying to protect them while he was unconscious. One guy was trying to pull me off while the other was still kicking my boyfriend. The party goers pulled the guys off and while I was in hysterics still screaming, they tended to my boyfriend. He woke up after a few minutes, and I wanted to call an ambulance and the police. The only problem was that there was no reception and the house owners wouldn't give me their phone to use because they'd all been smoking pot and didn't want to get in trouble. I stayed up all night in a small room with my boyfriend watching him to make sure he didn't have a concussion or pass out again or worse. It was an awful night and I've never been more scared. Only took a few minutes but it felt like hours. I was walking down a sidewalk, just about to cross a trolley track. My friend pulled me back, and the trolley drove on just a few feet ahead of me. Really saved my life. Taught me to keep my head up and look both ways, no matter how sad or down I'm feeling that day. I almost drowned at the lake when I was stuck under something I don't remember what. It's not too scary but when I got unstuck nobody noticed me almost dying. I tried telling people but literally no one listened and my brother even said no one cares which kind of freaked me out more. Probably when my dad had a seizure while driving up a very steep mountain highway with the cruise control set to 65. I had two options jerk the wheel to the right and drive off a cliff and die, or jerk the wheel left and drive across a grassy median and two lanes of oncoming traffic to hopefully stop the truck on the smaller hillside on the opposite side of the highway. There was no third option to keep the wheel steady because the truck was already wobbling out of control by the time I realized what was happening. I took my chances with the oncoming traffic and somehow missed everyone and hit the hill on the left side. The airbag hit me so hard it temporarily knocked me unconscious. It scared me shitless I was 15 when it happened and I still have PTSD from it 16 years later. And that's how we found out my dad has epilepsy. I was charged by a wild feral male bison on Catalina Island. I'm a veteran wilderness backpacker I've been face to face with countless bears and a few mountain lions, but never been as scared as being charged by a bison. I'm beyond lucky to still be alive. An hour ago. Waiting for an Uber outside in Nashville. All of a sudden, shots fired. Like 20 shots total. Everyone runs for cover where there is little. It happened so quickly, it was hard to know what was happening. Scariest moment of my life, especially knowing that two minutes prior we were standing in a way more exposed location. We were fine, but. Nothing on Twitter or the news. WTF. An evil rooster chased me as a kid. Had an oil fire erupt explosively inside a wood stove, someone had thrown a pop bottle full of used motor oil in that was capped. It blew the damper clean open and was causing the chimney pipes to shake violently like something in a movie. 
I emptied a fire extinguisher into it and it worked for a bit but it reignited and stayed burning but at a considerably slower roll. Was terrifying to nearly have a building burn down on you. I had really strong call of the void feeling when I was holding a double barrel shotgun. I basically wanted to shoot myself. I fell from a watchtower during my army service and almost broke my back. Fortunately it was raining and ground I fell on was soft otherwise I wouldn't be able to walk again. At least that's what the medic said. I was in the middle of the crowd at the concert shooting in Las Vegas in 2017 deadliest mass shooting in US history. Jason Aldean was performing and we thought it was fireworks until he was pulled off the stage. Everyone got down to the ground and eventually I couldn't take getting shot at anymore and sprinted out of the venue, leaving my friends behind. If you know or Google, he was using an automatic so it was just round after round after round of gunshots, not knowing if when one was going to hit me or my friends. Called my parents hysterical to let them know I was okay and walked to MGM. They had triage set up in there, otherwise no one else there had any idea what had happened outside. Finally met up with one of my friends and thought we were safe. Then someone comes running through the casino saying there's an active shooter there wasn't so my friend and I darted and got split up again. I am freaking out trying to get a taxi Uber back to my hotel because I'm thinking there are shooters everywhere now. One taxi kicks me out because I'm screaming to get to my hotel. Eventually I walk a couple blocks and am able to flag down a lift and get to my hotel. As I'm walking through the lobby, they announce they are shutting down the entrance to the hotel for safety so I sprint to the elevators to finally get to my room before they shut down elevators too. Spend all night not sleeping, unable to comprehend what had happened. Still triggered by gunshots. Leaving Chinatown in Chicago drunk at 3 a.m. after partying with my friends and walking toward the red line, slightly older male steps out behind a pillar with a gun one foot from my face telling me to give him all the cash in my wallet. I was borderline blacking out but remember laughing at the absurdity of what was happening and telling him I was a broke college student and only had plastic so kick rocks. He pushed the barrel up to my jaw then turned and ran off. I stumbled up to the train and sat down and simply started bawling my eyes out while an elderly Chinese woman rubbed my shoulder. We were coming home from visiting family. Rural two-lane paved road. My mom and three kids were in the car, I was driving. I came around a blind curve. Over a slight hill was a little girl in the road standing smack in the center of our lane. I slammed on the brakes and, thank God, stopped in time. I got out and picked her up. She was about two years old, crying. We heard some people nearby frantically calling and realized they were looking for her. We drove her over to her house. She'd been playing in the yard and wandered off. If you have kids you know how easily this can can move fast. I didn't judge. I am usually the type who sees a pothole and swerves just in time to hit it square on. I am thankful that, when it really counted, I reacted fast enough. My heart is racing just typing this out. It could have been tragic. IDK if I would have been able to mentally survive hitting a child with my car. She was so tiny. Years later, I fell through a window and slashed my arm, 48 stitches. That wasn't nearly as scary as a little girl in the road. Car accident, three barrels and landed on the roof. Was the passenger, my friend was unresponsive when I woke up. His arm half ripped as it was outside while we crashed. I was crawling into an abandoned mine and bumped into some support timbers with my hand and knocked them over. I legitimately thought that I was going to die. Luckily they were not weight bearing, otherwise the story probably would have ended differently. Being chased by a group of men on an empty street. I was 17, as a kid I was attacked by an ostrich. For context, I was living in the Middle East and during a school field trip, the ostrich there hated me specifically for some reason. Wandered a little too close and it tried to yank me into the enclosure. I slipped out of its beak and ran back to my class. If it ended up in there, I probably wouldn't be alive. Don't fuck with ostriches. I was roofied. My drink was right next to me and I must have taken my eyes off of it for three, maybe five seconds at the most. I'm lucky, because the second I started to feel weird, I called my brother who happened to be working across the street and he came and got me so nothing ever happened to me. But it's terrifying to think of what could have happened, who did it and why getting lost in a market city center in egypt on vacation my family got split up and we missed the hotel coach to our hotel my auntie got locked in a shop with the owner and he wouldn't let her go because he wanted her and the taxis refused to take us home unless we gave them a lot of money know those scenes in the movies where the main characters narrowly miss being hit by a huge truck and you hear the blasting horn fading as the truck drives away that happened to me with a group of fellow 16 years old friends, all of whom were very concerned that we felt like way better drivers than our adult chaperone. My daughter was born. I check on her multiple times a night and there's been a few times I didn't feel her breathing. Talk about terrifying. Wrong way driver on the parkway at night. He swerved out of the way at the very last moment.